Hello, hello, and happy Tuesday, and welcome to Draw with Stacy. Um, I always have like the weirdest thing when uh, the camera is this way on like where to look, <laughs> uh, but sometimes it does make sense to have it turn this way based on how I'm turning my paper. Um, just pinning everything. Hello, welcome. Okay, there we go, we're good. Um, so welcome, we're, see, I don't know where to look. Uh, we're in movie week, um, day two of movie week. Uh, it's continuing all the way in through Saturday. Um, we did ET yesterday. Your drawings were amazing. Um, some of them are just, again, I know yesterday someone said, um, I don't want to share my art because there's, uh, so many people whose art is like so much better was the kind of general thing of what they were saying. Um, there are people whose art is, if we're thinking of it that way, is way better than mine. Um, so please don't ever not share your art because you think you don't meet up to whatever expectations, because there are no expectations. Um, those are kind of all in your own head. So, um, thank you for sharing your art. I've seen more of you start to do it and I really love it. Um, I love seeing what you come up with. Uh, I love seeing the creativity, the things you add, um, embellish, uh, the whole thing. So it looks great. Um, and let me just see some comments here. My day is going good. Oh, there, where'd my comments go? Oobly. <laughs> I lost the comments, you guys. Oh, well. There we go. They're back. Whew. Shouldn't touch the screen while I'm recording. Um, so today, uh, we are doing a, um, Gremlins, um, we're doing Gizmo. If you've seen Gremlins, you'll know that there's some pretty creepy looking Gremlins. And then there's Gizmo, who's just absolutely adorable. So we're doing the cute <laughs> version. Um, but again, you know, it's will be really fun to see what you guys uh, what you guys do, how you guys add things and uh, all of that. So let me um, flip the camera around and I'll show you. Um, turn on the light. Oh gosh, I'm so close. Don't look at me. So here is our gizmo drawing. Super cute. Love it, love it. Um, so thanks, Rosie. <laughs> Getting that close to the camera, just like, whoo, it seems very close. <laughs> Especially under this bright light. Um, so here we go. Here's our little gizmo. This is when he's in his adorable phase before he, you know, has snacks after midnight and is exposed to water. Um, so, you know, definitely a lot of things that you could add in here. I even thought about adding a, um, adding a little, um, alarm clock on a table that said 1201 and then saying, can I have a snack? Um, that would be a cute little addition, but you know, I kind of leave those things off because I like to see you guys run with it. So I like to see what little things of creativity you come up with. Uh, you will have more ideas if you've seen gremlins. Um, if you haven't, you know, he could also just be sitting in a field of flowers. So that's the guy we'll be doing today. And let's get started. We're going to do what we always do and break them up into shapes, shapes upon shapes upon shapes. So I'm going to start um, with an oval. And 
And it doesn't have to be a perfect oval. Kind of looks like a potato, doesn't it? <laughs> because we're going to change the shape of it a little bit as, um, as we go. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to put a little V in the top of the head. So down inside the head, about halfway, find where your halfway point is. You're just going to come out. I'm going to change my line slightly because I want it a little more raised. And then I'm coming on this side and doing the same thing. So once I have that, I'll erase this middle section. Now you won't necessarily be coming out of the line. You could also just put a V in. Um, that's what I did on my original drawing. But um, today I wanted that top part to be a little more rounded than I made it. I kind of gave it too flat of a shape on the top. So I'm just expanding that line a little. <laughs> Potato patata. <laughs> So that's the start of the head. And then the body, we're just going to put down here. And we're just going to do a circular shape that connects on both sides. Because we're going to layer things like the arms in and the feet in. So for one foot will be in the front. So you're going to draw a circle, a pretty good sized circle, and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle down here. And the other foot is coming off of the side of the body. So you're going to do a circle about, you know, you want it about the same size as the other one, except it's going to be cut off because it's coming out of the body. And that's the other foot. Maybe made that a little bit too big. There we go. That's better in size. So see, I just leave the original lines and then I just kind of cut it down or you can do the opposite and you can expand it and then you'll erase. Yeah, the head does kind of have that heart shape at the top. And then you'll also erase the line that cuts across the foot. Now, one of Gizmo's arms is coming, um, well, they kind of both are coming from the same place, but one's more prominent. So I'm going to do a line that starts from the point where the head meets the neck. And I'm actually going to take it out of the body a little bit, curve it back in and around. So that's one of the first hands. Because again, the way he's sitting, he's kind of sitting sideways. So we're going to see more of this arm than we will the other arm. And then this arm is coming from the side in. And curving up. You kind of want them about the same you know, the same size. I'm actually going to make this one a little bit smaller so they match up versus making the other one bigger. So you'll do this curve here on the side and then a little line coming up. And then you can erase this line that goes all the way across 
the face where the head connects to the body. And then let's put the rest of the feet in. So I'm gonna do the first big toe, which is going to be the tip of a hot dog coming around. So that's the biggest toe. And then there's gonna be a second toe that comes off of it. It's a little smaller. And then the third little pinky toe and then from this toe, you can come down, you'll come out of that foot slightly, and then come back up and meet up with your big toe. And erase the little line that cuts across. So the pads of his feet, they actually stick out of the leg. This is really his leg, is this these circles. And we're gonna put a tiny little curve line here in the middle for the arch of his foot. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll draw that big toe. We'll have a smaller toe coming off, a littler toe. Bring that line down, it comes out of the leg slightly and then comes back up and connects. Erase the little line that's in the foot. And then I'm gonna put a little curve in the foot for the arch. Actually, I want that further down. Doesn't look much like an arch up there. There we go. So the way he's sitting, we're seeing like the furry part of his leg and then the bottom of his foot inside of his leg. Oh, congrats on the ukulele. That's exciting. Now his fingers are very kind of human-like in a sense. So I'm gonna do, and they're going to come on top of this hand. They're kind of crossing over each other. So I'm gonna put one about here, just draw a hot dog shape. And you can erase the little line that cuts across it from the other hand. And then a little bit over from that one, a, you know, not too big of a gap, but this, these two fingers will have a bigger gap than the next two fingers. You're gonna draw another little hot dog shape. And then closer, a third. And inside the fingers, I'm gonna do a little nail line. So on this one, I'm gonna have it coming from the top line and then come over to the edge. And then some little knuckle lines in the middle. And then for these nails, I'm gonna do a line that comes across the finger and then a little half circle. So same on this one, little half circle. And then those little knuckle lines Now the finger from these hands is kind of tucked behind. So you can put one that kind of comes from behind back here. So see, we're not seeing the whole thing because it's covered by this, but we should be able to see some of the nail. And then we'll do one coming down. It's going to run into this finger just a little bit. And then another one a little bit closer to it. 
and then put those little nail lines in and those little knuckle wrinkles. Doot, doot, doot. So see the hands are just kind of resting on his belly and kind of resting on top of each other. And Gizmo will be furry, so we will do that same fur technique we've done a lot where you kind of come through the edges and you do little V shapes that come out and back in. So I'm gonna do that when I go through with the pen. So not many of my lines will stay super smooth straight lines. So let's do his ears next. His ears are really why I drew him this way because I wanted to make sure I had enough room for his ears. So his ear line, the top, is pretty close to the top of his head and it just kind of curves out and then comes around. And then it's going to curve the end. I don't want it completely pointed. And then it'll wave back into the face. And I want to draw that top edge of the ear. So I'm just going to do a line that follows the shape all the way down to the bottom. And this one I'll draw similar. I'm gonna do it a little bit different, but ultimately I want it about the same size. So I'm gonna start it on the same size of the head. So you know how we do that? We put our pencil where the other one is, we bring our pencil over and then you can drop it. And I'm gonna have this one sticking more up. Curve this around. and then wave it down and I'm bringing it into the head about where the other one was. And then same thing, I'm gonna put that line for the top edge of the ear. So they don't match exactly because the ears, you know, it's like a dog. Like sometimes one ear will perk up or they'll just move their ears while they're listening. And that's kind of what we're doing here for Gizmo. Now the mouth shape is going to be kind of a curved upside down triangle. I know I love his little fingers and toes too. It's kind of one of my favorite parts. So I'm going to do a line that comes um, across the face. And it's going to curve around down. So see, it just kind of has that triangular shape. And see, I actually really think that when um, Disney <laughs> was drawing, whoever illustrated Stitch, they definitely had seen the Gremlins. They had seen Gizmo. I mean, there's a lot of similarities between Stitch and Gizmo. Gizmo really is kind of a toddler. <laughs> Now, I, his nose is actually going to start coming from the top of this. So kind of find your middle, and it is a little pointy, and you're just going to curve a line down into the face, and I'll do it on the other side too. I made that a little too big. I'm going to just start that whole thing over. So center line down in. There we go, that's more like it. I made it a little big on the first go round. And then once you have this nose shape, which almost looks like the top of a Hershey's Kiss, doesn't that remind you of a Hershey's Kiss? 
you can erase the line that comes across. Give him two little nostrils inside of that nose. So two little curved lines. And then his smile is kind of a wavy line. So it starts up, comes down, waves up, comes down, and back up. And then all we're missing is those big oversized eyes. <laughs> you started coloring and forgot to outline. That's okay. Sometimes you can co color without even outlining. So I'm going to start these eyes at a point, and I'm just going to curve up and back in. I made that a little big because I want a little more room around the eye. I'll do the same over here. Coming up and around and back in. And you just kind of look at the sizes and see, do you need to adjust? This one needs to be, I made the other one a little smaller and now this one actually needs to be a little bit bigger. Not much though. Now at the very top, there's a curved line inside of the eye. It's not very far from the edge of the eye. Uh, Gizmo almost has like an eyeliner line. So you're just doing a kind of curved edge out to the side. And then I'm going to put a larger circle inside the eye. We'll do the same over here. I'll put a circle inside that. And then I'll do a circle of light inside of that. And those are the eyes. I'm going to curve that just a little bit more. Make it a little more circular. And that is my gizmo. There's a couple little details that I'm going to add with the pen. I'm going to do some little lashes. But um, one of the biggest things is giving him this furry look. So we've done this technique before where we come along the line and you're coming outside of the line and back into it, outside of it, back into it, outside of it, back into it. And you're just going to do that around the whole face. I'm gonna do it down around the side of the arm. Some of it I'm gonna keep smooth closer to the fingers. I'll keep doing it down the side of the body. Around the feet for those legs. So the ears aren't hairy, the feet, the actual feet, this part isn't hairy, so you'll do those lines smooth. And 
And then I'll put some little detail lines inside his body too because he is a combination um, of brown and white. Oh, I'm sorry, Tara. That doesn't sound like fun at all. Come in around the arms. Leave some of it smooth and then add a little bit of fur on top. Those little fingers which are like kind of human, kind of monkey, but I mean, monkeys kind of have human-like fingers also. No worries, you can go back and watch it later. It'll be up forever. <laughs> Speaking of up, tomorrow is up. So tomorrow we're gonna do an up drawing If you haven't seen that movie, watch it immediately. So gremlins, yeah. Depending on your age, gremlins can be a little bit scary. E.T., less scary, but I know some kids get a little bit creeped out by the alien. Um, but, uh, yeah, Up, there is nothing scary about Up. It's one of the most beautiful, sweet stories ever. So everyone should watch Up. Oh, not enough space for the big ears. <laughs> When I first started drawing him, I was going to draw him um, vertically in portrait mode, but then I um, realized I wanted to make sure I had ear room, so I switched it to landscape. I didn't go on those wavy lines at all. <laughs> Sometimes I'm drawing on top of my pencil lines and I can't see what I'm doing because my hand is blocking the way. So now I'm going to do this little nose. The little nostrils. Once I get all this done, then I'll add some other little fur details to give the separation between his brown areas and white areas. So see, I'm putting that little line up at the top and I'm gonna color that in black. Cause again, Kismo almost looks like he's wearing eyeliner. And then I'm just gonna do little lashes off the edge. So see that tiny little lashes. Color in this part of the eye black. I know, right? I always wanted a gremlin as a kid too. They just look so cute and sweet and innocent. That's kind of what's so fun about that movie and why, you know, someone who said uh, 
they remind you of toddlers. Um, you know, they're, there's some validity to that, right? Because they look so sweet and innocent, <laughs> and yet they can rock your world if you're not careful. <laughs> Much like a toddler can. And now I'm going to start here from the nose and I'm going to do a little fur line around the eye. One of his eyes has white around it. And then coming from the bottom of the face from the underside, I'm going to do the same thing and put a line because he's got white on the belly. So there's kind of a V shape here. And then I'm gonna put one right along here. And then this will all be white. So this is white, this middle section. Arms are brown. Oh, arm lines, I'm forgetting. So we need to do zigzags across the hands because this portion is brown, but then this is white. So let's put those little zigzaggies in. And that is our gizmo. And now I'm ready to erase. Get all of that pencil off of there, which you'll have a lot of pencil because we did that fur. You know, you have that original line work that you did. And let's get all this. Let's see, do I have everything? Close enough. Give it a little wipe. A little bit more right here, a little bit more right here. <laughs> I don't know, Linda. Did Maybe you took a nap. Did you take a nap? I'd like to think you were napping. I would like to be napping. Um, so I'm going to come in with a peachy tone and color in the ears. So this color is going to go on the ears, it's going to go in the mouth area, it's going to go on the fingers, and it's going to be on the toes. Um, what can you do if you color part of the eye black in pen that should not be black? Um, what part did you color? Did you color all of this? 
you know, you can just, if you colored, you could just make the pupil bigger. If you colored in the circle of light, I wouldn't worry about it. Not all things have it. So it's not going to be missing anything really. If you accidentally colored the circle of light in, I've done that many times. It depends a little bit on what you just colored in, what portion of the eye. No worries, Linda, the videos are always here. They'll be here waiting for you when you're done. Oh yeah, there you go. That's a good recommendation. Part of the white of the eye in black. Um, you know, I would just say once um, you're coloring it in brown, so part of the eye is brown, so maybe you can just color cover it with that. Uh, the chances are that once you actually get it colored in, you're not gonna notice that very much. Um, as Linda said, if you have a white out, you could definitely kind of go over the top of it with a little white out. Uh, there's not much you can do to take out black pen other than white out, um, but you can. Uh, also, I just think sometimes those mistakes like that, you're seeing it maybe because that's, mo you know, maybe ra right now most of what you've colored is the eye. Uh, once you really get the eye all colored in and you get the rest of the um, coloring done, it will distract you away from um, what you, that little mistake that you made. And there we go. There's all my little peachy areas. Here's the original drawing real quick while I switch colors. Okay. So I'm going to color um, very similar colors for the eyes and the body, uh, I just kind of did two shade, two different shades of the same color. And I'm going to color the eyes on the darker side, pushing harder with my pencil. Um, Gizmo is a little bit of like kind of a reddish brown. So I'll use this one for the eyes. And then I'll use this one, which is a little bit deeper of a color for um, the fur, but I'm also going to color it lighter. So where the eyes, I did a very dark coloring um, on the fur, I'm gonna do a lighter coloring. And you could also do that technique with Gizmo where you kind of do the little dashed lines, the darker dashed lines. Um, that will give him more hair, um, a hairier look in his body. Okay. 
We do that sometimes when we're adding that furry look inside versus just coloring it all in completely flat. Don't you think he kind of looks a little bit like Stitch? Just a furrier, furrier version. <laughs> I think they have really similar, those big ears. <laughs> of course, just don't. Don't feed him after midnight or don't put him near bright light. He comes with a lot of rules. You have to follow the rules if you have a gizmo, which I think are called mogwai in the movie. I think, isn't he called a mogwai? And then when he turns the little things he creates are the gremlins. I don't think Gizmo was uh, really a gremlin. It was the other little creatures. So see, you could do it, and then you could just do all these little dashes. I'll do a couple just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. See, that just kind of gives him a hairier, furrier look to him. You could even do it in a different color. You know, if you colored them in darker or you're working in pen, um, you could find a different color and put it in. But that just kind of gives them that, that furry, furry texture. And then if you, you know, if you're fighting your pencil and you don't like all the white that's showing through, Doing something like this kind of hides it and it kind of makes the white make more sense because it's like, you know, with a dog, with anything furry, you kind of would see some variance to the colors. I might as well finish this part since I got started. I don't want it to look funny. And I actually only have one other little smidge of brown to color in. So see, I like that. He kind of has that really furry appearance. And then this back portion is also brown. And the rest is white. The area around the feet, what we're seeing of the legs are white. We're not seeing the portion of the leg that would be brown and the stomach and the little circle in the face. So I'll go ahead and just add some of these little furry lines. And that is our gizmo. 
So as I said before, you could add lots of different little funny things. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, just know that um, Gizmo is not supposed to eat after midnight. That would be something funny to add. Um, you have to keep him out of bright light. That would be another thing. And he can't get wet. So those are your big rules for Gizmo. Um, I don't know what we're drawing yet tomorrow for Up. I haven't picked. So you'll have to come back to find out because I'll be deciding that tonight. Um, so there we go. That's the finished product. Um, definitely load your pictures. I Again, I've really been loving seeing them lately. A lot more of you have been adding them in. Um, you can post them into the group. You can share them with me on Instagram. They can go in the album or out of the album. And tomorrow we will be back at 11 a.m. to draw something from the movie up. So I hope you have a wonderful night and happy drawing. I'll see you guys tomorrow.